Hi, Paul here. We're going to talk about low end today, but specifically on bass drums. I tend to do um, a combination of using bass drums, but also using soft booms, which are also bass drums, but mic'd in certain ways, sometimes performed in certain ways, um, and then, you know, EQ'd and compressed and whatever to give you that kind of really, um, that kind of low end pulse that doesn't really have a definition to it, but it kind of adds a sort of subbiness to the normal bass drum sound. Um, but there is going to be some times when you want to just get your orchestral percussion, low end percussion, and you want to give it that sound so that it just tracks exactly what you're doing with the bass drum. Now I've got five possible ways to do that. There are five different things that I use. They all have a slightly different flavour, but they all provide a really useful alternative to the soft boom. So let's dive straight in. Now you can see here I'm using uh, my Abbey Road 1 bass drum, sounds like this. So those are the two kind of dynamic extremes. Now, I'm going to close this so you can see the kind of selection of utilities that we're going to have a look at. So the first up is the UAD Precision Enhancer, but it's the one that um, people maybe don't use as much. There's the kilohertz one, which is really nice for crisping up your top end. Um, but this is the low end version and it's got kind of variety of different uh, modes. You can change the slope of the filter on it and you can change the target frequency and all that kind of business. And I've, I've got it dialed right up. So I'm going to switch it on and off so you can hear the difference. Now, the thing I like about this one, it gives a lot of length to the sound. It really, um, it really keeps going all the way along until you almost can't hear anything else. So it's most like the soft boom in some ways. Um, it's pretty flexible. You can change all the settings uh, and, and kind of hone it down. Uh, and these different modes are very, very different. D is one that I always use because I just want that subby, subby boom. But um, it does have different, different characteristics for each of those modes. So that's the UAD version. Over here in SSL land, we have the subgen. Um, this is really good. <laughs> this is really good. This is a, a one that I've only fairly recently discovered. Um, have a listen. Now again, I've got it dialed right up, but you can really, I mean, the, the bands here are, if I pull down this band a bit and push this one right up here, that's my target frequency. If I was working on a, on a, well, let's, let's switch it on. I don't, you won't be able to hear this maybe through the, uh, through the medium of YouTube, but let's see. You see, I can almost more feel that in the room than hear it. Maybe it'll come through, but that that is, uh, if you're gonna if you're doing something that's gonna be played back on a huge system with really good low end, then I would definitely use that. But if you're if you're targeting kind of um, average playback, then I probably wouldn't use too much of that because it's gonna occupy a huge amount of energy in the spectrum uh, frequency spectrum, without giving you any result if you're listening to something on earbuds or whatever, you know. That's the sweet spot for me, 40. Here's the 80. Now for me, that is kind of, uh, I call it the kind of brown area. It's, um, it's, uh, what's the best way of describing it? It's not got sub energy in it, but it has got an interesting sub box poke, if you know what I mean. It's not the boxy frequency. For me, 160, that's the boxy frequency. So that would be for a very specific sound where you, uh, you know, you try that and you go, oh my God, that makes that sound sound really great for some specific, you know, reason. But for me, it's a no. So these are the two frequencies. and I wouldn't have them dialed up quite as much as this, but let me do that again. I'll, I'll switch it off first. That's, that's, that's some good stuff right there. Okay, low ender. 
So I've seen a lot more chat about this plugin from people who are um, track makers, songwriters, producers, and it's something that's been designed for them. And I think a lot of the time as media composers, we are using stuff, we're hacking stuff and using stuff that's been designed for the producer world um, to try and do the stuff that we need it to do with our orchestral instruments or our, you know, uh, our kind of ambient synths and things like that. All the, all the bits and bobs that we use to write with. This is a perfect example of that. It's got a super focused low end. Even on the quiet stuff, it's really solid. Um, and, you know, we, we're not even cranking it right up to the top, but it's just got a beautiful sound. Uh, and again, you can kind of blend the amount to taste. This, to my mind, is the most similar to those uh, DBX 120As, I think they were called, um, which were designed, I believe, for clubs uh, for playing disco music to give it a, a <laughs> some proper welly in the bottom end, but obviously found their way into studios as well. Um, and this gives me that, it's definitely got that kind of uh, vibe to it. So let's turn that one off and move on to the next one, which is Leapwing makes some fabulous plugins. Uh, Root One, this is their bass end. And check this out. Now I've got this set fairly lightly, but if I just bung that all up by 6 dB, That's got a really nice sound. It's almost like a combination of the UAD and the low ender. It's got that slightly synthesized sounding subcomponent, but it also has, I guess it's, they've separated it into thump and sub thump and punch. It's also got that kind of um, organic feel that you get. And I don't know if it's a combination of these things. Um, if we, let's take out the sub altogether and let's take out the saturation altogether and just play with the thump. So what you're hearing there, and if you add the harmonics, I think you should be able to hear what's going on there. Um, just comparing that to the sub component. So your harmonics is generating something that enables you to sense those sub frequencies in the higher part of the spectrum, which is incredibly useful. So. If we could just go back to, um, I don't know, let's let's just set up a balance. I Sorry, let's look at the punch first because I don't use the punch on this. It's up in the boxy territory, 114 for me, or look, getting, getting into there. And it would probably be great on bass guitar um, to give you a, uh, an extra bit of kind of smooth tone within the within the spectrum of the bass guitar. But for me, for the low percussion, it's not doing what I want it to do. I really just want to fill out that bottom end. And the harmonics is really great because it gives you a little bit of... I'm gonna use too much of it, but you definitely miss it when it's gone. Let's put a bit more sub in. <laughs> So again, it's a really useful and flexible uh, bass plugin, that one. The final one that we're gonna look at is Ozone. I'm just using Ozone 11, I'm using only the component for low end focus. Now this is a, an interesting outlier for me because it does something different to the others. It, it, really, it really operates only on the strongest transient component and that doesn't, for me, I mean, at least the way that I've got it set and the way that I've tried to use this, it's almost more like a transient design low-end tool. Do you see what's happening? If we listen to just the different sound, the delta sound, It's really pulling out. Um, and if we change it to punchy, it's kind of doing the same thing. Um, I guess maybe that's part of the design of the plugin. You know, uh, I've tried it in mid-side, it um, just is a bit, totally like that, that sound. And then we've got the transient versus sustain.
yeah, you can set those differently. So let me know in the comments below if you think I'm using Ozone 11 low end focus all wrong. But for me, what it does that's really good is it carves away the sub quite quickly. It's more, it's almost like a subby transient designer of, of sub fatness. So if you've got a kind of impact bass drum or whatever, you know, every other bar or something like that, it gives you that punch in the kind of subs, but it, then it gets out of the way quite quickly. So if you've got a busy mix, that's really useful because you're not going to, you know, there is a there is a, a risk and a slight inherent danger of these that they just take everything over. And it, and it, you know, it really fills up the frequency spectrum, which is great when that's what you need. But sometimes it's not. So you'll probably have heard all of these and think, you know, I really love that one. And we'll be subjective. It'll be different for all of us. Um, so I hope that was useful. I'm going to do some more of these kind of slightly quicker and more focused things that address things that um, that I think of, you know, little processes that I go through when I'm writing um, that might be useful. So if there's anything like this that you think, oh, I'd really love to know X, then stick it in the comments below and I will uh, I will address as many of them as I can. Okay, thanks very much for watching. See you on the next one. Bye-bye.